tax-hungry politicians suffer a setback, but for how long? Beleaguered taxpayers got a break last week when two bad international tax initiatives pushed hard by the Biden Treasury Department got temporarily derailed. The moves involved imposing two different global minimum taxes. One, which set a 15% minimum levy on large multinational companies in each country in which they operate. Ireland has long attracted international businesses with its corporate levy of only 12.5%. Hungary has gone even better with its rate of 9%. Heavy taxing countries like France and Germany have loathed the idea of this kind of tax competition. They see the 15% minimum as just a start for a global tax cartel that can then raise this rate and thus no longer lose companies to friendlier tax countries. Another minimum tax is aimed particularly at U.S. high-tech companies. It would allow governments to tax digital businesses that sell services in a country but don't have a physical presence there and weren't previously taxed. Before, a country had to be based in a country or have intellectual located there to be taxed. Tax-addicted governments didn't like the fact that these corporations located their intellectual property in low-tax jurisdictions. It's no surprise that the Biden administration is totally sympathetic to such high-tax sentiments, which is why Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen last year pushed hard under the auspices of the Multi-Country Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, to get governments to go for the two-part tax deal. Politicians being politicians, more than 130 countries went along. Unfortunately for the Janet Yellens of the world, you need approval by each government. In the U.S.'s case, that means both houses of Congress. The Senate is split 50-50 between the two parties. In a tie, the Vice President, Democrat Kamala Harris, cast the deciding vote. Enter West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who last week declared his opposition to the 15% minimum tax on multinational companies, at least for now. He wants other countries to go first. That dims any prospect for this tax seeing the light of day before the November elections, when Republicans are likely to get control of one or both congressional chambers. The GOP is adamantly opposed to this Biden-Yellen tax scheme. Also, the Hungarian government is also against the deal. The European Union needs unanimous approval from its 27 members to implement the necessary rules, and Hungary won't do it. Furious, the Biden administration is kiboshing a 1979 tax treaty with Hungary. These agreements are usually technical in nature, such as avoiding withholding taxes on cross-border payments. Yellen hopes the inconvenience will cow Budapest. It won't. Another good road bump? The digital tax part of this scheme is complicated, and now it looks like this won't be wrapped up until next year. Delay is good. Higher taxes is one thing a troubled global economy doesn't need. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.